Hey, welcome everybody to our Monday program. And uh, let's have a wonderful guest for you all. And uh, I'm sure if you're, you've uh, looked already, you already see who our, my guest is today. So uh, Billy Crone is with me today. And this is going to be a great time with Billy. He's coming on in just a second. Hey, a real quick reminder for you guys. Billy's going to be speaking in San Marcos along with Brandon Holthouse, Don Perkins. Let's see, Scott Townsend. Uh, Greg Denham, I'm missing somebody, John Holler, myself. Uh, it's going to be great. The live stream is available, and you don't have to watch the live stream while the event is happening. Uh, if, you, if you can't, you have up to 30 full days to watch it anytime you want, uh, anytime in the morning, the night, any day of the week, doesn't really matter. As long as you have access to it uh, through the Internet, you're good to go. So you don't even have to be home you could be traveling during the conference it's coming up next week in Southern California at San Marcos. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. And as I mentioned, Billy's going to be uh, one of my guests, and we're going to be talking about some of these things right now when we get him on here. So is he here yet? I'm guessing he's not here yet, or you guys would see him by now. So let's get going with some things. I'll just start off with this as we're waiting for them to work through the tech Thing right now. Um, so I was asked to be on OAN, uh, One American News Network, a couple weeks ago, and uh, they had sent me some things to talk about, and then we ended up going a little bit of a different direction. Uh, but some of the things uh, that, that, oh, that came out through that interview, things you guys have seen on the internet, uh, there is this book. It's, it's uh, called Queer Theology. Check this out. Rethinking the Western Body. Uh, the queer theology movement has been likened to, get this, a rehearsal for the end times and a new Pentecost that allows the Holy Spirit to blow where it chooses, according to Radical Love, an introduction to queer theory in a 2011 book. So rehearsal for end times, let's say no kidding, as we watch all of the different things that are taking place right now, uh, how else could you describe it but just that? It, and then uh, going on, uh, this is uh, from uh, somebody that was interviewed regarding this whole queer theology. Hey, check this out. Uh, and Billy's here. I'm going to bring him in in just a second. But I want to I put this here. This person said, I'm fine with you doing your thing and calling that Christianity. In other words, you and I talking about righteousness and saying, hey, we believe the Bible is true and so forth. Uh, this person said, hey, you can do your thing. Apparently, this person is a minister and call that Christianity. You are allowed to live your life in a way that I think is deeply misguided and incredibly sad. So they're saying, uh, we're incredibly sad because we live by the Bible. You can do your own thing. We'll let you do that. Actually, that's a lie because they won't let us do it. They keep telling us how evil we are and want to censor us from everything. Okay, Billy. Billy's here. Please welcome Billy Crone. And uh, listen, I just started talking about some of the things in the news while we're waiting for you to be able to get uh, reconnected here. Great seeing you. I can't hear Billy. So can I don't know if everybody out there can hear Billy. Is his audio working? Okay. So Billy, so how are you? That's a nice jacket. I can see it. I can't hear anything you're saying. But I know it's cool. <laughs> there we go. Now I can hear you. All right. Yeah. Cool. Great. Okay. We're all good. So I like that. Cool. Yeah. I'm still waiting for your size, man. I got connections. I'm going to hook you up. Okay. Here's the thing. I'm trying to lose weight. So until I get down to the, the body weight I need to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get a new jacket. I, I mean, you, that's good. You got to have goals in life, but uh, you don't need to postpone this level of joy. But, okay, so, I, I won't so, eat chicken. Does that matter? <laughs> no chicken for there me. There you go. That's a start. <laughs> right cool. Uh, that, that's cool. Hey, it's great having you so much. I, I just want to thank you so much for taking your time out of your schedule to join us. I promise I won't keep you too long. you got a lot going on, and you're coming. You're with us in Mexico. You're going to be again. Yeah. We're all going to be together in uh, coming up in uh, San Marcos area, Southern California, here just next week. So lots going on. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Lots going on. And, 
It's, uh, as you know, certainly, uh, Pastor Tom, uh, speaking and traveling all over the place, it's it's awesome. It's a privilege, uh, but it's, at times it gets very exhausting. But we're in crunch time. Oh, we and, are. Uh, we, we need to, if we haven't had it already in second gear, we need to punch it into third gear as Christians. Uh, this is the, the last gasp. Things are coming up so fast. Our departure is getting near, and we need to finish strong. Amen. I couldn't agree more. We need to be pressing as hard as we possibly can. It's like, hey, it's not a time to sit on the sidelines or kick back or anything like that. It's time to run yeah. as hard as we as we possibly can. And uh, so it, at the conference coming up in San Marcos, you all have you all have really fascinating things to say. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I always enjoy it. But you have one on um, uh, I think you're going to be talking about uh, AI or something like that. Let me look at your topic again. What is it? Klaus Schwab uh, and the coming brain chips. And uh, in a nutshell, uh, what he, I, he's already genetically modifying everything, which is a repeat of the days of Noah uh, that Jesus said, Matthew 24, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. In the days of Noah, one of the sins that was going on was this hybridization of mankind. Well, Klaus Schwab and the gang, uh, people don't realize that there's two sides to the Great Reset. The first one is an economic reset, which people are catching on now. They want to not just take over the global economy. They want to turn it into a cashless society and then biometrically tie people into that cashless society. Go figure uh, with either your hand or with your forehead. Uh, but what people don't realize is there's two sides to that same coin called the Great Reset. The other side is not an economic reset. It's a human reset. These guys are transhumanists. And not only does he want to, and they already are, by the way, uh, genetically modifying everything on the planet, and I'm not using hyperbole, plants, animals, insects, you name it. Uh, Bill Gates just launched some genetically modified uh, mosquitoes here in America. Why? Because it's going to spread malaria. Why? Because Bill Gates has another solution that he's going to make billions of dollars off of, the malaria vaccine. So these guys are murderous money hungry mega millennials and, and and schwab's there at the top but anyway but what they also want to do to humanity is they want to create basically to give you a visual uh you know that's the star trek star trek show the borg and basically people mm -hmm. were combined with man with machine and the the one central entity controlled them all like remote controlled robots i am not exaggerating pastor tom that's exactly what these guys want to do they want to it's a human reset and they want to genetically modify the planet into their image that they believe is better than god because they believe that they are god and he wants to create a borg reality a cyborg reality and it's on tape now the 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 fascinating thing if you can use that word in this context uh is he wants to pull off this cyborg humanity with, of all places, the brain, the brain chip. And what's fascinating from a biblical point of view, maybe it's a better way to put it, is that's one of the two places in the Bible that the Bible talks about people receiving the mark. And for years, we've all talked about the hand, and there's all kinds of hand technology, hand biometrics. It's out there, in, on, it doesn't matter. It's already there, already being popularized, promoted, etc. But we've always wondered, what, what's with the head? Who's going to do the head? Well, Klaus and the gang, including folks like Elon Musk and others, he's not a good guy, folks. He's not on our side. Wake up. And we expose that. Uh, but they're working to get these brain chips that will give them, it's on tape, it's current technology, not coming already here, that will allow them the ability to have not just access to our thoughts, but delete our thoughts, insert thoughts, and turn us into remote control people. It's not a joke. It's not a game. That's the level of the wickedness that these guys want to bring. This is their version of utopia that they call the Great Reset. It isn't just you're not going to own anything and be happy and eat less meat. That's the tip of the iceberg. These guys want to create a mindless slave cyborg reality and it's actually well underway. Most people have no clue. So that's one of the things I'll talk about, Lord willing. That's, <laughs> so there's a lot in there. Um, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I have a few questions to ask you. One of them is just with everything that you just said, you look at Revelation yeah. chapter 14, whoever yep. receives the mark of the beast or worships his image, uh, they're, they're doomed forever. There's no yep. possibility of going back in repentance or anything. They are forever yeah. set for the lake of fire. I, I, you look at that passage, spiritually we can make a connection and realize there's a rejection of Jesus, but I've looked at that for a long, long, long time and thought to myself, there's something that happens. And yeah. now you look at technology, everything you just said, do you think there is uh, the uh, possibility of a connection 
with this technology? Because it sounds like this is what's going to be required you to receive this implant in right. order to proceed forward to be able to buy or sell and what is rapidly coming. You know, look at that in Revelation chapter 14. You got to kind of wonder what's really going on there. Exactly. I'd agree with you, Pastor Tom. And I think, again, that's the fascinating in the scripture point of view that we're seeing is uh, Revelation 14. It basically says, and I would agree, uh, the Bible's very blunt. You take that mark of the beast in the seven year tribulation, not us, we're out of here prior, but those that are left behind. If you take that mark, you are doomed. You don't go collect 200 bucks. You don't pass go. You're going straight to the lake of fire. And many people are like, well, why? Why? It just seems so harsh. Well, number one, contextually, the Bible clearly says that it's a choice, and these people are choosing to worship. It says that there are four different times in Revelation 13. They choose to worship the Antichrist instead of Jesus Christ. So guess what? They use the vernacular. You made your bed. You get to lie in it. That's your choice. That's your, and, so you're, and maybe that's all it is. Now, the last couple of years— Looking at this technology, genetic modification that's really going on, even against people's will, uh, some people are saying, well, maybe part of that could be, yeah, they chose to worship the Antichrist, but when they take that marking system, will it genetically modify them into something that is non-human? And if they're technically not human, then can they be redeemed? And so that's been around for the last couple of years as a newer development, but I'm telling you, this is exactly what's going on. Uh, and I would agree with now these brain chips, cyborg mentality that Swab wants to bring to the planet and Elon Musk and the others. I got them on tape and many of them. And what it will allow them to do is, again, they can delete your thoughts, not just monitor your thoughts. They can delete it. Now, listen to how they're promoting that. Hey, wouldn't it be great? to get rid of PTSD for the soldiers or, or, hey, how many people around the planet suffer from depression? Well, if you give us access to your thoughts with this brain chip, uh, we could delete those and you'll never have a negative memory in your whole life. Well, the, the downside to giving them access to your thoughts, which by the way, they wanna do other things like they want to be able to, um, and I'm not joking about this, I got it on tape. They want to uh, get access, not to your thoughts, but your dreams, and that you could literally, then it'll become a paid service. I'm not joking, it's on tape. It'll be a paid service that you could pick what dreams you wanna dream at night, because you gave them access to your head with the brain chip. And, but of course it's gonna be a paid service like a Netflix, right? And you scroll through it and you go like, oh, okay, before you go to sleep, I, okay, I wanna dream about this. And I joked and I said, what are you gonna call it? Dream flicks or something? But, <laughs> but this is real reality. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, but the downside is when you give these megamillaniacs access to your thoughts, and yeah, they admit that it can delete negative thoughts. But wait a second, go back to Revelation 14. What else could it do? Let's say that you're in the seven year tribulation, and by the way, AI is what's going to be controlling this because you're talking about having access to even everybody's thoughts on the planet that took this mark. That's too big for humans. You need something superhuman. Well, again, that's where AI comes in. It could run them back into the system. AI monitors everybody on the planet and then all of a sudden gets an alert from certain people. All of a sudden, they have a thought that goes through their head. Hey, Maybe I should turn to God. I mean, this is a horrible time down here. Uh, maybe I need to get saved. I, or, or all of a sudden, a, mm. a, a memory pops up. Man, remember when that Christian told me about Jesus? Maybe that's some, And immediately, it could be deleted with this technology. So again, a, a, and they can insert thoughts. They can insert, I kid you not, this is one of the things they're pitching. You can get rid of your earbuds because they can stream music directly to your brains and, and all this. And they said that we can access through your brain uh, chemicals like serotonin and, and melatonin, and those are basically what's called our happy hormones, right? And so basically they could access uh, and change the chemical structure in your brain. So let's say you start thinking about God or Jesus. Well, they could give you negative emotions and literally scare you and deter you away or distract you with music or something else uh, or just flat out delete the thought. But you add all that together in just that one thing, this brain chip, then again, go back to Revelation 14. They think about it. They could delete it immediately. Uh, they could they could distract you. They could detour you with absolute horror and things of that nature. Oh, oh, by the way, they also say that we can also take over a person's body. And this is a direct quote. We can make you run against your will, stand in place against your will. We can make you lose control of your limbs, of your body against your will. They could, do, they could basically turn you into a remote control person. So you put that in and... People, Pastor Tom, I'm not saying thus saith the Lord, 
But on top of, yes, Revelation 14, they're doomed to the lake of fire because they chose to worship the Antichrist instead of Jesus Christ. Yes, maybe it's also because they got genetically modified and they're no longer humans. But if, in fact, the same technology also is this brain chip technology that allows them to access our thoughts, then people will never get that far. It'll be deleted right away. You'll be deterred right away. Your mind will be clouded right away. They'll shut you down as a human right away. You're doomed. Wow. That is some heavy stuff. And the technology is rapidly advancing where some of this is already here. Uh, with, Elon, yeah. with Elon Musk, um, so you said he's, he's not a good guy. I, I agree. No. I, I remember following things from Elon Musk several years ago thinking, I mean, this guy's a bad dude. But he's really won the hearts over of a whole lot of conservatives uh, because it just he, pr he presses back against uh, some of this really bad stuff on the outside. However, he's, he's heavily involved in Neuralink. Um, he's, yeah. what, he's launched the, this 5G um, Starlink network. I mean, every, yeah. you, you read what he's really doing. He's on the forefront of making sure all of these things happen. Oh, yeah, exactly. And again, he says, it's, it's like what politicians do, right? They say the right stuff, but behind the scenes, they never deliver, right? And so he appears like, man, he's a guy. He he bought Twitter because he's about free speech. No, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Uh, boy, he's like a, a modern-day Tony Stark, and he's warning us against the dangers of technology and AI. Well, then why is he developing AI? Well, uh, uh, oh, oh, he's fighting against Klaus and these globalists because he's, he's, he's a champion for humanity. No, he's a transhumanist like the rest of the guys who believe that with technology, they're going to live forever without God. It's nuts, and that's on tape. So, but let me just give you a real skinny what I'll, Lord willing, expand on at the conference. But Musk, let's put it all together. This, and I call it the Chrome Theory, but I think it's can hold water. <laughs> uh, so, because I wanted to dispel this idea because people go, okay, so they got brain chip technology so they can access people's brains and thoughts. It's on tape. They admit they can do that. Scientists admit they can do that. Even our dreams. Okay, I, I get you. But let's go back to logistics in the seven year tribulation. You know how long it would take logistically to mark people with a brain chip uh, in the forehead, uh, you know, uh, that would just take too long. That'd take longer than seven years. You hear the naysayers say something like that. Well, not anymore. Elon Musk is on the front lines with this technology with this company called Neuralink. And by the way, we expose, he's not the only one. There's many, many brain chip uh, companies on the planet. He's just one on the forefront who gets the most press. But his goal with Neuralink is to whip out these uh, brain chip procedures, and I quote, as he says, as fast as doing a LASIK eye procedure. You just go in, get your eyes lasered, and you walk right back out. And that's what he's talking. He wants to get you walk in, get your brain chip, now your access to the matrix, and walk back out. So the logistics and the infrastructure are already here, and they could crank out those chips into people's heads very quickly. And he's just one of them. But let's go back to, you know, the, the these guys are big on numbers, they're big on dates, they're big on names, and, and nothing's by chance. But let, let's let's just play around a little bit. He's got this uh, company, and most people have heard of it. It's called Neuralink. Right. And so Neuralink is the brain chip interface that he's going to put into people to link neurally, uh, neurologically, your brain to a computer. Right. Neuralink. Well, do you think it's by chance that his other company that he's also simultaneously working on, which, by the way, he just got uh, approvals by the FDA to do the human brain link with Neuralink. Um, that was just a few weeks ago. But he also has another company, not just Neuralink, but Starlink. Right. So what's Starlink? Starlink will take any, uh, will create a, a global matrix that will literally blanket the whole planet for the first time in man's history. And what will that connect people to? To a global matrix. So you got neural link that links the brain to the computer. And then you create Starlink that blankets the planet with the matrix that links the computers to back to the brain chips. Do you see where we're going? And again, Neuralink, Starlink, what are you going to be linking, pal? Well, I think it's that cyborg mentality. Then he's always been, uh, again, champion, like he's this great um, technological guy, and he's warned us about AI. He just bought. He just went out and headhunted. He just went out and bought one of Google's top AI programmers and brought him in to his umbrella uh, because Google's another big developer in AI. And again, you need AI to run this cyborg humanity because you can't. 
hire enough people to monitor everybody's thoughts on the planet with these brain chips. And he's doing it right now. It's called XAI. It's here in Nevada, my home state. He is developing an AI to run the system, right? Well, wait a second. So if you got Neuralink that links the brains to these uh, computers, and then you got Starlink that provides the global matrix to link it all on a global basis, and now you got AI to run it, you still need a platform. You need a universal platform. Enter Twitter. Twitter, he's rebuilding Twitter into a universal platform like WeChat. And you're like, what's WeChat? WeChat is the universal app. It's basically a one-stop shop app. And so you don't have to download on your phone a whole bunch of different apps for this thing. And I want to do this, or I want to travel here. I want to register here. I want to do a hotel here. I want to do my banking here. I want, no, no, no. WeChat is a universal app by China. It's used by tons of people there. It's almost completely ubiquitous. And he's basically turning Twitter into that. Okay. And so Twitter becomes the universal app that is run by AI that people are tied into that global matrix with Starlink that you're connected now with the brain chip. It all, when you put it all the pieces together, uh, it go, and then you look at the big umbrella as was stated on tape back in 2016 by Klaus Schwab. Uh, they really want to create a cyborg humanity and Elon Musk is right smack in the middle of it. That is fascinating. And then we throw in Tesla. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you look at electric cars, we're going to yeah. make everybody's house part of the, this electric, uh, a smart home, smart car, mm -hmm. smart everything. It's like yeah. it's complete control in every, every area that you go. There's nothing yeah. that isn't. Well, and then you combine that with the, the, again, the first half of the economic reset, which is rapidly, unfortunately, coming, the cashless society, even here in America, thanks to Joe Biden. And, uh, but uh, then combine these things you're talking about electronically with an electronic cashless society and everything will be shut down. You'll be, you'll be, they will control and dictate every aspect of your life and, and, and not just where you can go, what you can buy. Uh, it will be uh, literally how you behave and what you believe, because if you don't, they don't need to send cops to your door. Uh, all they got to do is sh shut you off and punish you economically. All right. So, so go back to what you're talking about here. And again, Musk is building the global matrix that ties it all together, including the brain chips. But go to a cashless society, and let's say you say, you know what, uh, I didn't like what Joe Biden did. Next thing you know, you get dinged on your universal app. Uh, hey, you just lost 50% of your money in your checking account. And that's really what people are saying they're building. And so the average Joe, uh, are you ever going to do that again? Of course not. So, so now you don't even have free speech. But you say, you know what? This is this is crazy. Mm. Um, I, I'm gonna. You ain't gonna control what kind of food I can buy. You, you meat. I'm American, right? I'm American, and I'm gonna buy, you know, buy whatever I want, right? Uh, no, you won't, because even if you go to the store, uh, you have an allotment, a quota, and it's all cataloged because it's all digital now. Your purchases, all that stuff. But your money, your digital money, won't work because you already had your quota for that. That in part, in fact, part of the plan people don't realize is not just meat. Uh, but it's also they, they, you only get a few articles of clothing per month and things of that nature. So they want to limit everything. But you're saying they can't do that to me. Well, once it goes digital, they can't. Now go back to Tesla, electric vehicles, uh, all this stuff with smart homes and that stuff. Let's say, okay, um, uh, you speak out against the government. You say something well, uh, um, uh, against them or whatever, uh, or you, you have a conversation with somebody that they didn't like, uh, then uh, – then guess what? They will, uh, you go to start your car, your Tesla car, it's electrical now. You ain't going nowhere because it's all electric. You, you can't have yeah. access to transportation. That's a form of control. Uh, then uh, let's go back to your house. You say, well, you know what? I'm just going to store up all kinds of food and survival gear. And I just got my home paid off and, and they ain't going to get me. You know, I'm good. I'm cool. Really? Well, there's one thing we still have to pay. Even if you paid off your home, it's called taxes. Right. Uh, and he says, so, so, so what? Well, if you do something they don't like, then you can't spend your money because it's all digital. They control it, which means you can't pay your taxes, which means guess what? Even though your home's paid off, they still get to confiscate it. Yep, they right? can come and take oh, it away and way, everything in it. Everything, including before you even get to that point, let's say you speak up, do something you don't like, or you went to a church service that is a radical form of Christianity, you know, uh, as they would define us and uh then guess what your smart home with your smart thermostat and all it, it all and your smart appliances it all shuts off 
Yeah. You can't we, use your AC. You can't use your heater. You can't use your fridge. All your food goes bad. This is real reality. This is the matrix that these guys are building. And uh, one of the proofs of that is you, you just saw it was a couple of weeks ago where this guy was hooked up. He had a smart home, got a delivery from Amazon, and he has an Amazon smart home. And this guy claimed that he said a racist remark, which it turns out he didn't. It was just the own Amazon pre-programmed, can I help you? Yeah. And uh, yeah. Amazon shut him down in his own house. So Yes, because, it, because you gave him access with this technology. Gave him access. And they're going to tell you you can't, you, you can't buy or sell unless you give us access, unless you have all these different things. Now, check this out. I have this article here. It's from Expose, really good article. Uh, digital currency, CBDCs are a solution for a problem we don't have, and they want to implant it under your skin. Now, the article is really good, <laughs> and it goes on to describe the the planned uh, inflation that's been caused, goes into QE1, QE2, why we have this, and it's really everything that you just said. And the whole point of digital currency is everything that you just said. You know, you're so we're looking at it, and that's what all this is about, is them having control. Now, I, I'm going to ask you a, another question. So you look at uh, the Klaus Schwab's of the world. Who do you think is really running these people? To me, I look at them, they're like puppets. I mean, yeah. Joe Biden is the perfect stooge for, for these globalists. Uh, you look yeah. at Klaus Schwab, you know, he, he he's a spokesperson. He's got to be. There's There's got to be people that are behind the scenes that we don't necessarily have their names the mm -hmm. much more powerful and they've got their actors that they prop up right right yeah it, well it, it's really multi-layered and you know if you do like a, a reverse layer uh the the one like joe biden i agree joe biden's a puppet and i also know who he's a puppet of of probably maybe several fingers if you will controlling him and uh, and his administration that people are saying is the o, o Biden administration, uh, and but uh, I got him on tape in 2016 uh, at the World Economic Forum talking about the coming new digital revolution, the fourth industrial revolution. And before he gets up, and this is Joe Biden, before he gets up at the World Economic Forum to give his little spiel about the new digital revolution coming in 2016, by the way, Klaus gets up and just raves on Biden and says, man, I've been so impressed with you over the years, even before you were vice president under Obama. And when you were here coming as a senator, et cetera, for years, you were the hardest working guy. He was just uh, salivating over Joe Biden. So Joe Biden's a puppet. He's a puppet of Klaus Schwab, World Economic Forum. That's why he was put into place. That's why the, the election was rigged, that they had to get him in for a time as this. And the first thing he did was did what Klaus wants to do to dismantle the American economy because he wants to reset the global economy with a cashless society that we're talking about. But if you're going to do that, America has to go down because America is the backbone, the dollar is the backbone of the current economic system. So that's why uh, Joe Biden was brought in for such a time as this. Now, you got Klaus in the game. Well, Klaus, basically, I call him his SS agents. He's been working since 1971 with the World Economic Forum, planting these people, not just Joe Biden. Biden in our country, but all over the world. And that includes up north with uh, from us, uh, Trudeau in Canada, Macron over in France, Merkel in Germany. You pick a country, they, you do the research, they're all plants. Even the, the latest prime minister in England, Sunak, he's is direct out of the World Economic Forum. And so he's had 50 years to plant his SS agents around the world. And that's why we had such a uniform response, instantly over the whole world in all developed countries over the COVID pandemic. It, uh, every lock and step, everybody reacted the same way in the same procedure with the lockdowns. And then here comes the mask and then all the, the social distancing and all. I mean, it was all a coordinated effort. It's all been pre-planned. Now, with that said, if you do the research, Klaus has clearly got ties, and we exposed this uh, with back in the Nazis. He grew up with the, the Nazi regime. His dad was buddies with Hitler. His dad's name was Eugene, and we exposed all that. But if you also look at during the formative years of the World Economic Forum, Klaus comes over here to America, and he starts hobnobbing with Harvard and Henry Kissinger. So you're talking about, okay, who's another layer? And so I think now you're getting up to those guys who've been around uh, for quite some time, pulling the strings. Uh, including over here in America, like Henry Kissinger and the gang. But then you could go even probably further up about that. Well, who's Kissinger working with or who's above him? And then that's where you could get into discussions where 
uh, you know, could be some of the uh, globalist bankers and things of that nature. Uh, if you want to throw out some names, some people say you're, now you're getting up into the echelon of uh, could be secret societies like the Illuminati or the Freemasonry or like the Rothschilds. But then if you go above all that, whether you can whether you can completely do a reverse osmosis and get totally specific with everyone, but I think we could demonstrate there's layers. But we do know two things biblically. At the very top of that evil regime layer is Satan, right? The Bible's very clear. And all these guys, whatever layer they're at, they're all filtering down from Satan. This is his plan. Uh, he's a liar, and he's been one from the beginning. He's the father of all lies. He's a murderer. He's been one. So he's one, and, and he's going to uh, – there's going to be a time frame where he's going to have his man on the planet called the Antichrist. We know this. God told us. Now, the good news for you and I as a Christian is, okay, so here's, here's Joe Biden. Here's Schwab and the gang. Here's Kissinger and probably another layer above him, and then here's Satan. Now, if you stop right there, that'd be very depressing. But you got to go one more. It's called Psalm chapter 2. God is the Amen. one who's in control of everybody, man. And that's why you and I can go sleep at night and listen to what God says in Psalm chapter 2. He who sits enthroned in heaven laughs, right? Amen. And he rebukes these guys. And he's like, man, you're really going to overthrow my son's kingdom? Are you nuts? Right. And then he warns them. He scoffs at him. The Bible says there in Psalm two, and he says, you better kiss the son lest he be angry with you. If these guys don't get saved, Pastor Tom, all they're doing, nobody gets away with nothing. All they're doing, Klaus Kissinger, all these guys, Joe Biden, if they don't get saved, the Bible says you are storing up the wrath of God. Right. And so you and I as a Christian, we need to lighten up. Right. We need to take this serious and nobody's condoning sin and evil and tyranny. And we need to speak up against it as the salt, the light, and the last day's resistance, as God calls us in 2 Thessalonians 2. But lighten up, Christian. We're the winners, not the losers. We belong to Jesus Christ. He is the one in control. And if God's laughing about these guys' attempt to take over the world, and we know the beginning from the end, and we're part of his team, you know, l let me give you a little secret here, Pastor Tom. In light of what I just said, the latest thing, if, as you know, people have been saying, Pastor Billy, what is up with these jackets? You know, you are. have you gone over the edge? You know, did Vegas go to your brain? Uh, you know, what, what do you turn into a word of faith guy? I've heard all kinds of crazy <laughs> accusations, right? And and for me, it's just a fun thing to do, right? Uh, and plus, it gives somebody uh, something else to, to question. What's up with chicken? Why is he always talking about chicken? Well, now they're talking about the jackets, right? But anyway, my point is, on, honestly, a little bit of brevity in these times, I think, is a healthy thing. I'm not making fun of the times. I'm not saying it's not serious. But as Christians, we need uh, to get busy, uh, not only speaking up against the truth, but we not we need to f not forget that we're the winners and we are not going to lose in this equation. Amen. You know, those, in fact, uh, that is great. So we just started a new series just the other day. It's called uh, You Can't Make This Up Thursdays because you just got to have some privity. Look at these idiotic yeah. things are happening. It's like, yeah. uh, oh, it's just something else. Hey, I'm going to ask you about when the rapture is going to happen in just, in just a second, uh, because okay. there's a lot of questions about that on the all over the internet. But before we go there, hey, tomorrow, Joe Kerr's going to be joining me live. It's going to be uh, terrific. And I also want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel wherever you are watching it. Um, whether it be YouTube, the app, the website, Facebook, wherever it is, subscribe, follow, whatever. Share it with your friends also. And then Billy will be joining me, and the live stream is available for San Diego. We have seven different speakers. It's going to be absolutely terrific. And you can watch the live stream anytime for within 30 days of the conference. So if you're traveling, you can't watch it while it's live, no problem. You can watch it anytime. You can watch it three weeks later. You can watch it at 3 o'clock in the morning one day if you want. Whatever it is you want to do, watch it at your leisure. Watch it as many times as you want. Uh, it's all up to you. So that is totally awesome. And plus, I am going to be with Billy Crone in a European Prophecy Conference tour that he has put together. So, Billy, I'm going to be in Ireland with you, Scotland, uh, Italy. It, yeah. It's going to be uh, terrific. And... Um, also, Brandon's going to be, Mondo will be there. Uh, I think Ken also. Yep. Um, yeah. Man, it's going to be off the charts. That's going to be really good. That's in Europe coming in September. And you can find that on Billy's website and also on ours. I think all the information is there tomorrow. Um, so it's going to be great. Would yeah. You? Yeah. And, and uh, the feedback from the folks over there, Pastor Tom, is just, they, they're, do uh, you think it's uh, dark here spiritually? You think the church has gone south here uh, in America? 
uh, which it has, you think is really bad, you ain't seen nothing yet till you go to Europe. And these people are the feedback from the folks, they cannot believe they are beside themselves. They're going nuts uh, over, I can't believe it. Nobody has ever done anything like this for us. I'm not saying that to toot our horn. I'm just saying it's a special event. They are very, very appreciative. They've never had an opportunity of, of not just a, a solid prophecy teachers coming, but five of them uh, coming for, and, and the conference is for free, and, you know, cause we're, we're looking at it as a missionary mindset, as you know, we're just going to make an investment in Europe while the door's still open. Right. They may shut the travel down again. And so, but man, they are just super stoked, super excited. And what I'm hoping uh, is that God will use that Lord willing to start a spark in that area as these group of Christians who want all the scripture in Europe, including Bible prophecy, which is even worse over there than it is here, the lack thereof, that maybe God will use that as a spark and gather up a group over there, and maybe they'll start a church, plant a church, God will raise some people up and start making an impact there as well. Amen. Um, I have a couple of questions. One about the rapture, which I've still got to get to in just a second. However, uh, Tara Mullins says, is there a possibility that after the world is broken up into 10 countries, I think she, she, this person's thinking of 10 kingdoms, that the World Economic Forum will be the 10 and where the Antichrist will rise up out of. So I'm not sure exactly what they mean. Something, I, I'm guessing it sounds like the World Economic Forum controlling everything in this 10 uh, kingdom world that we come into. Let me, let me phrase things a, a little bit different way. Do you believe that the world is going to be, it's going to be a technocracy of 10 kingdoms, or it'll be 10 regions geographically. Um, I, I, I believe geographically. Uh, in fact, mm -hmm. you were in Mexico. I was, uh, yes. what, what you had said in our Q&A is, is the same thought process I have. You already have Mexico, U.S., and Canada. That's one region. Yeah. And we say that right. the Club of Rome presented that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And it seems yeah. to me that's the direction they're going. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, again, Revelation 17 is what we're referring to. And the Bible says that at one point in the seven-year tribulation that the planet's going to be split up into 10 chunks, 10 kingdoms. And at one point, once it gets into that divvied up in 10 parts, then they're going to hand that power and authority over to the Antichrist. So that's where he gets total control. And if you listen to Klaus and the gang, uh, that's exactly what it's going to be, is 10 economic geographic regions on the planet. That is their plan. In fact, our latest documentary, Klaus Schwab, The World Economic Forum and the Coming Mark of the Beast, we expose this in great detail. Uh, and you mentioned the Club of Rome. The Club of Rome in the early 70s, uh, in late 60s, early 70s, they produced a map and go figure. Uh, it just happened to divide the planet up into 10 regions. You're saying, well, who cares about the Club of Rome? The Club of Rome works for Klaus in the game, right? An, a, an economic think tank. So even back then, the plan was, they didn't say nine. They didn't say two. They didn't say 113. Ten economic. It's almost like somebody's following a script or something. Then I kid you not. It was when I was pastoring in uh, New York, and so that would have been probably when I came across this, um, 2009. And uh, so I w was doing some research, uh, and I was on the UN website, and I came across this announcement in 2009, and I saved the screenshot. And uh, it referred to an event that took place in 2008, and it said that they have now launched uh, 10 rulers in 10 regions on the planet. I, I got the screenshot. I'm not joking. And uh, and so the, the plan has been to split the planet up into 10 chunks. Now, the European Union was the first big giant uh, foot in the water. And what's the European Union? It's, it's the unthinkable. Who in their right mind as a country would give up their national individual sovereignty and hand it over to a group? Well, that's what the European Union was, including their own unique currency called the euro. Now, we, we we're so used to that, we don't even think about that. But back in the day when that happened, it was like, it was radical, right? A group of nations coming together under one umbrella, giving up their sovereignty, head by a single new government that oversaw the whole thing. Well, it's never stopped, right? There's uh, talks of pulling off the African Union, the Asian Union, the South American Union, on and on. Now, this is the one that people don't, really pay attention to and they better especially since joe biden got back in office uh and that's the north american union now that was exposed popularly talked about 
in prophecy circles somewhat, again, probably in the uh, 2008, 2009, people would talk about that. Uh, and, but, uh, you know, it just seemed like it's dropped off the radar. Uh, well, the day one that Joe Biden gets back into office, uh, guess what he starts doing? Not only dismantling the American economy, but he starts these talks again with combining, and here's the North American Union idea. That's been around for a long time, for decades. Canada, U.S., and Mexico. And uh, back as far as Bush Jr. days, who was a big proponent of this, and he was another one we got snookered by. And uh, he, back then, it used to be called SPP, Security uh, Partnership Prosperity or something like that, SPP. Well, they've just changed the name. The new name that they have to combine all three countries into one, now with Joe, is called the North American Leaders Summit. Check it out, N-A-L-S, the North American Leaders, and also sometimes goes by the name the Three Amigos Summit, right? But they're in talks right now to combine all three countries into one and for greater economic power, you know? And then, of course, you think, we never do that. Well, in time of economic crisis with this guy at the helm, uh, we might have to go along that anyway. Now, with that said... I believe that's the scenario you're talking about with the 10 kings, 10 geographic regions, dare I say economic regions geographically. And I don't think it's um, a stretch because if you study Klaus and the gang, this has been their plan for the whole get-go. Uh, and, and the Bible's the only book on the planet that tells us what it really is. You can call it a planetary economic regions, the, the 10 pieces of the Club of Rome map, whatever you want. It's the 10 kingdoms in Revelation 17 that eventually, once that gets solidified, say, hey, Antichrist, here you go. We give it all over to you, which, by the way, is kind of freaky because remember that tape of uh, now King Charles mm -hmm. when he talks about the, the powers of be around the world, we need to what? Give trillions of dollars, surrender our sovereignty over to who? He, he who's he? Saying, that was he, the big elephant in the room. Remember that? He kept saying he, trillions at his disposal, and it was as if this person already exists. He was talking in the present tense. Right. And so, and so I'm not saying that's at the Lord, but you look at that, and this is all on tape. Once they, got, once they get these, the planet into 10 economic regions, which, by the way, you're saying, well, who's, who's King Charles? Well, King Charles, what? It's a commonwealth of, what, 52 countries? That's a big chunk of the planet. But if, if, but if you look at these, the planet getting split up, and these global leaders who want to have this take place, like King Charles, he's one of them, and they're already talking about one day, someday, in order to save the planet and bring in utopia and humanity, we need to hand it over to a he. It's again, it's like, what are you guys doing? Following Revelation? What, what? Go figure. But but let me let me share this one thing. Back to the North American Union. To me, Pastor Tom, when I came across this and realized that once Biden was brought in to dismantle because he's Klaus's papa, dismantle the economy, but also to push again this one of the 10 chunks, Revelation 17, North American Union. This also to me explains why the insanity of the border issue, right? Yes, yeah. we, and most people have caught on to this. Yes, it's a way for the Democrats uh, to basically uh, take over states with Democrat voters because statistically, the people that come over here uh, will vote for those people that allowed them to come over here, typically Democrats. And that's a statistic, a mathematical statistic. Uh, and so, so, yeah, I think it helps build their voter base. Right. And so that's a way for them to take over. They're, they're cheaters. They're liars. OK. However, you look at this combining of the North American Union, you're going like, hey, no way, man. So that's America. That's America. There's no way we're going to surrender our sovereignty and we're going to merge with Canada and Mexico. Right. Well, listen, think about think about the millions of people now flooding across the border. And by the way, they're not just Hispanic. Uh, this is a whole nother rabbit trail. There's over 160 different countries come across that border, folks. Uh, one of the big things that people yeah. are really getting concerned about is it's young nationals also from China. Yep. Why is China coming over here? But that's a whole other topic. But it's it's from multitude of countries. But listen, you got millions of people flooding across our border on purpose every single day. And so these are not Americans. No mm -hmm. offense to the individual person, but look at it just geographically, statistically, from a national sovereignty point of view. How many Americans, Pastor Tom, are going to be left who are patriotic and who – realize that we need to maintain our national sovereignty and national freedoms and our Americana way of life 
are going to be left when the hammer comes down to combine all these countries. And I think that's another layer of a purpose as to why they're flooding these people as fast as they can across the border. They're diluting America so that how much of America will be left when the hammer comes down. Yeah. It's all, it, it, it's a plan. And God told yep. us, hey, this is the direction it's going to go. You can see these things coming. By the way, a couple of, uh, a couple of quick things. Billy, I had like a thousand more questions to ask you. Most of them are going to have to wait till the conference next week. Yeah. But I got to get to the rapture here in just a second. But before we do that, uh, two things. One of them is, uh, how can people get a hold of you? Getalifemedia.com is the teaching website, getalifemedia.com. Uh, and that's where we have basically 12 years worth of teaching material. You can get the books and the documentaries and what have you. Uh, also, uh, for those of you hooked on apps, uh, you could just search my name, uh, Billy Crone, and you can download our app for free, which basically unlocks the uh, all the teachings, 12 years worth of teaching on the website. Also, for those of you hooked on, uh, I'm tired of looking at my phone with this app. Uh, I want to. I want to. I want a bigger screen to see those nifty jackets that Pastor Billy's wearing lately. Uh, then we also have an app that you can download on Roku. We have a Roku account, and you can watch it very easily on your television. Also on Amazon, Amazon Fire Stick. Uh, search for my name, and you can download it there as well. Very easy to watch on your TV. Very cool. And that's uh, your books that are behind you. Yeah, just a couple of them. That's cool. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> uh, very cool. Hey, by the way, somebody commented on. Uh, Alistair Begg saying we're not in the last days. Real quick, then I'm going to get to my question for Billy. So Alistair Begg, he has a different belief. He's not uh, premillennial. Um, so when it comes to certain things, when it comes to Bible prophecy, he sees things differently. I will say this, the ultimate fulfillment of the prophecies in the Bible take place during the tribulation period. So technically you could say that really is the tribulation period, the last days. However, we are also warned uh, that we can watch for the signs or the events, and that's mm -hmm. what we're able to watch, and we can see these things, so we know that the time is, uh, it, we can't be too far off. We can see the signs of the tribulation, the signs yes. of the last days. Therefore, we know that we're gonna be called home soon. Home soon, I believe that the trumpet could happen, who knows when, it could happen today. Mm -hmm. Might not happen for five more years, might not happen for 10 more years before we're raptured. Right. Okay, and this is where I, I've, I've got to address this because there's a lot of people that are think like we do, pre-tribulation rapture, yeah. but you can be so caught up in that moment that's got to happen right now that you can fail to prepare for what we're going to go through if we're here for a few more days, given digital currency, right. given artificial yep. intelligence, uh, given climate laws that are coming, given all the things that Elon Musk is doing, and Klaus Schwab, and more lockdowns. I mean, speak some wisdom into this and hope at the same time. Yeah, I, I you know, one, hope. Uh, God shares us these things not to uh, freak us out. It's to uh, encourage us to get more excited about his soon appearing uh, and to motivate us. Uh, because when the rapture happens, not if, he's going to find us doing something, Pastor Tom. And hopefully it's not uh, in the middle of some big giant sin or in a spiritual detour or loving this wicked world system. And that's not how I want him to find me. I'm not uh, scared of being left behind uh, because I'm not going to be left behind as a born again Christian. All born again Christians go through rapture. I know I'm not going in the seven year tribulation because it's an outpouring of God's wrath. Romans chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 Thessalonians 5 says, We are saved from, rescued from, and not appointed unto God's wrath. So I'm not going to go there. But what they do, they're a daily reminder. All these things that we talk about. And you're right, they culminate in the seven-year tribulation. Well, then people could say, well, why do you need to know that? Because, again, I'm not going to be there, but it shows me that my departure's getting close. That's how you translate it, and, and it doesn't make me fearful. It makes me excited, and it gets rid of procrastination, and it's a purifying thing for my walk with Jesus Christ. There's never a time to goof off, but certainly don't be goofing off now when we're this close to the finish line. And so it motivates me. It excites me. That's the proper uh, translation. It's never a time to be fearful. Fear is not from God. That's from the evil one. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. But all these events, Klaus Schwab in the game, all the baloney, nobody's going to get away with nothing. God has the last word. They're storing up the wrath of God. So all it is, is I translate it with, hey, Jesus, thank you. Thank you again for another reminder that uh, don't forget, today could be that day that I get raptured. Uh, so I need, to, I need to witness as much as I can, get rid of procrastination. Maybe today's the last opportunity I can to reach my loved one or neighbor for you. 
I, 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 I need to say tighten my walk with you uh, because I don't want you to find me goofing off or going AWOL and things of that nature. So those are all great things. That's what it's for. But you, you mentioned about people getting uh, uh, unbalanced with this. And, and, and I use this analogy. It's called the railroad track analogy. You got a railroad, you got a train, it rides on a track, there's two rails, right? And if you're trying to get from point A to point B, you need both rails all at the same time, right? And so if you and I are going to have a healthy walk with Jesus Christ, we need the uh, both rails at the same time in our daily walk as we go from point A to point B. And that is the imminency of the rapture is one rail. The other one is, but yet it might still be a few years off. But like you said, five years off, maybe it's 10 years. I don't know. And it's not an either or. And the reason why it's not an either or, because if you put yourself in an either or scenario, you're going to derail. If one of those tracks on a train comes off at anywhere along the, the line, the train's going to crash. And many Christians crash and burn because they get unbalanced. And what they do is they either think only of just the rapture and the imminency, which is true, but they don't balance it out with the other rail. And, and they, they, they shirk their responsibilities, right? And they run into trouble. Or they forget about the imminency of the rapture, and then they act like this is the only world that we're living for, right? Both are an imbalance. You need both tracks, both at the same time, if you're going to be balanced as a Christian. I live every day knowing this could be the day that it comes and take me, and I'm excited about that, and I want to be faithful and finish strong by His grace, by His Spirit. Yet at the same time, I also live equally, just as energetically, that I have to do what He's called me to today because it still may be a while. And what has He called me to do today? He tells me three things as a Christian, and this will keep you busy every day. I need to be the salt. I need to be the light. I need to be the restraining influence. And so that means I need to engage the culture, reach the culture, impact the culture for Christ. And when I see evil, including the evil of Klaus and the gang, basically laying the foundation for the Antichrist, we're supposed to be on the front line as Christians. You don't go a wall, So you need both at the same time. That's the proper balance. Oh, that was fantastic. I couldn't think of a better way to conclude our time. Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was so good. What a great analogy. I'm going to steal it. Well, I'll give you credit. Um, but uh, okay. listen, tomorrow Joe Kerr is joining me. Lee Brainerd is going to join me on Wednesday. Uh, connect with Billy on Get a Life. He has, has just a fantastic ministry. You're going to see so many things there that are just going to absolutely bless you. And Billy's very generous, too. By the way, he'll say he even take his books. He doesn't care about a copywriter or anything like that. He just wants to get the truth out there. Oh, yeah. Yep. Hey, Pastor Tom, real quick, just to draw on that. Uh, just, just to get, add proof to this, uh, that what we're talking about, people say, man, you guys are really whacked out brain chips, all this stuff. Uh, and I took this as an encouragement, but this just happened this week, uh, this last week. Um, but we, uh, I took it as, man, we must be hitting the nail on the head. We must be right over the target because this is what they just did. Amazon, Amazon, Jeff Bezos, you know, they work for Klaus in the game. Amazon did not like one of our books. You mentioned books, but specifically the one with the inoculus title it was just called klaus schwab the third reich in the COVID 19 holocaust anyway so they they didn't like it and we've got like 60 some books up there and on our own website in other words but they called our publisher they contacted our publisher and said hey we don't like this our publisher that i've been working with for 15 years bowed a knee to amazon and completely shut us off Wow. Completely. Sh no recourse, no nothing. You can't get your files. You can't communicate. You ain't ever going to publish anything with us ever again. Just from that one complaint. Wow. I thought, well, what? Just then take the one so-called offended book away. Why would you erase that? But they bowed a knee to the corporation who's bowed a knee to Klaus. Now, God is sovereign. Psalm chapter two. Within 48 hours, God led us to a Christian publisher. And I won't say who or where, but who owns all the actual printing equipment. And we were back up and running in 48 hours and we are in a much better, stronger position. And even now down the road, if Amazon doesn't like something too bad, I call that a nanny, nanny, boo, boo in Jesus name. But what it tells me is guess what? These things really are real and they're trying their best to shut us up. The folks like you and I and others who are trying to warn people, this is not a joke. If you're not saved, you better get saved. And church, this is not to freak you out. It's to let you know, man, the rapture has got to be getting close. Finish strong. Look up. Your redemption draws near. 
Amen. Uh, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that last little bit, too. That's terrific. I can't wait to see you. I know you got a lot going on. See you next week in San yep. Diego. God bless. See you all. God bless. Take care.